necessary. He was also an Apache pilot. And for those of you who don't know, Apache pilots come with extra large egos. Let's indulge in a little sibling rivalry. There's a joke that goes about pilots, and I can tell it because I am a pilot. How do you know you're talking to a pilot? They'll tell you. <laughs> Apache pilots will tell you twice, in case you miss it the first time. Well, this one afternoon, he was sitting outside the classroom looking at the wall, and he said out loud to himself, why hasn't a cadet from our university ever branched aviation? Isn't any of our cadets good enough around here? Well, Cadet Barley was sitting in the back of the classroom and heard that. And she set her sights on, I just want to be good enough to get aviation. So the best PT score, the best weapons card. I went to jump school, um, really tried to knock out my academics, and, and did everything competitive, joined the Ranger Challenge team, and outperformed a lot of my male peers. Senior year, Major King calls up and says, congratulations today, you got aviation. What do you want to fly? Well, I had never equated getting aviation with flying. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, oh my God, I didn't think this through, you know, all the way. I don't even know how to change the tire on my car, despite my father's best efforts. What have I gotten myself into? I said, sir, I, I don't really know what I want to fly. He said, you got to be kidding me. I didn't even know what aircraft were in the Army inventory. Get down to flight school, and I ended up flying the OH-58 Delta, which is the Army Scout Attack Platform. And um, before I got there, though, you know, I'd done everything right. I, I got the best scores, did everything I could. But before I could get down to, to flight school, the Army, and I think every branch does this, they take all your measurements. And, um, you know, you've got to be able to reach all the tops and everything. Well, mine is to take your wingspan, and I was about a good half inch too short. So before I get commissioned in branch aviation, I had to go down to Fort Indian Town Gap and get measurements. So they strap me into the cockpit, and they simulate a crash sequence. And so if something happens to your crew member, you can reach and do all the emergency procedures, you know, cut the engine, do all the stuff you have to do. So I get down to Fort Indian Town Gap, and I was so nervous. Um, and I met with this flight examiner who was very formal, very stoic, had a clipboard, and he said, we're going to go into the cockpit, and we're going to strap you in, and you're going to have to reach all these switches. I said, okay. So we go out there, and I was sweating. And uh, we get in the cockpit, it straps me in, get this long pointer, and very formally pointed out to each switch that I had to reach and, and do. So I was going through fine, all back, this one, and this one, and there was this one emergency switch that had a red casing over it that you had to flip up. It was across cockpit reach. And I'm, I'm reaching, and I had to, I had to, I wasn't even close. And my feet are coming up off the pedals, the harness, I was digging into my armpits, and I'm just, I'm like giving it everything I got. And I'm, the narrative that's going on is like, you've got to be kidding me. Like, I, this, I just have anything I can do about this. I, I mean, I did all the right scores, I did everything I could. And all of a sudden, I hear, good reach to that. And I turned, and I looked, and he didn't even look up from the clipboard. He said, between you, me, and this clipboard, you reached that switch. Is that clear? He said, <laughs> And we went off to the front foyer, and he, I'll never forget, handing that clipboard over. And he said to the guy, without even missing a beat, he said, you know, Great examination, we're going to get her off to flight school, she'll get her wings and get off to wherever she needs to get to. Fast forward, you know, six years, so I flew the OH-58 Delta for six and a half years, and um, the reason I like to tell this story is because, um, you know, I think a door opened for me that I, that was not, that could have gone either way, and since you know, I, I went to Iraq during the surge, you know, 2007 and 8 for 18 months. I, I got a combat action badge and came back with a bunch of medals that I don't remember the names of. And between then and now, I suffered with a lot of guilt, shame, regret, um, disappointment, anger, doubt. Some people call that PS, PTSD. And um, one therapist, we were kind of 
going through one of my most traumatic events from the cockpit. And she said, I want you to go back to the point of origin of that incident. And I kind of uncovered a lot of the, like, Major Agor and um, the flight examiner and kind of investigating what led to that interception of what I would call one of the worst moments of my life. So kind of going from this major victory, unexpected and unexpected yes, that opened the door to this paradise, to this sudden, like, how did everything go completely and horribly wrong? And it wasn't until I went through that process of, okay, well, where did that intersection start? Was it with the examiner telling me, go ahead? Was it, you know, flight school? Where, I mean, the, the chain of sequence of events that led to that, so I don't know what became of Major Agor. I don't know what became of the flight in, 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 in examiner. But what I do know, and I don't remember the names of my medals, but I have this story and I feel like if ever we feel like our arms are too short to fly, fly anyway. And don't second guess and just, your feet can be planted firmly on the ground, and you can take flight. And I think if I can hold on to that, then I win. And this gives me the opportunity to do that, which I'm really, really grateful. So I might not remember the names of my medals, but I'll remember my ASAP certificate. So I'm grateful for that. Thank you.